So I love first person shooters, I love a bit of realism in my shooters, and I love games like The Division where you have to fight for your loot and equipment that you can use later. So on paper, games like Escape from Tarkov or new really released game Grey's on Warfare, these games sound exactly what I seek and that I will be really interested in playing them. Well, no. I watched a lot of videos, I watched a lot of streamers, I did a lot of research, it's just, it just never interested me that much. I, those extraction shooters never really were interesting to me. I like the idea that you have to deploy on the map and gather your own equipment and loot, or whatever it may be, but what's the end goal? I never really un understood the end goal. Just gather all the best gear, I mean, and then you have a reset, so-called wipe, and start everything from scratch, and I keep repeating that endless circle non-stop. I really don't understand it personally, it's just not for me honestly, especially with the big cheating prone that are plaguing these games, especially Escape from Tarkov, I just don't want to spend money on a game I will only play for 2 hours max. But that being said, I do get why a lot of people find that very enticing and interesting and all that kind of stuff, and low-key wish, I low-key wish that I could care the same way as those players care about those games. So when Call of Duty Warzone, for example, announced TMZ, I thought it would be like a nice entry point for me to understand why extraction shooters are interesting to a lot of people, as it was free to play and I was already playing Call of Duty on a somewhat religious level, so it was kind of perfect to test it out. But sadly, the mode itself was very shallow to me and never understood extracting, you know, with equipment that I already have it unlocked in the main game, so it just felt really weird to me. But fast forward to the current day, we have a lot of new extraction shows coming out, and it's only gonna get more interesting since Tarkov shut their bed with a new edition called the Unheard Edition that cost 250 bucks. I'm like, really guys, that's the name you came up with for a 250 buck edition? Great marketing, boys. Just great marketing. Jesus Christ, what the fuck they were thinking. Anyway, so everyone is smelling blood and they want to go for the throat. Obviously. And one game stood out for me, this game you're seeing in front of your screens, it's called um, Arena Breakout Infinite. God, what a name. Made by developer called Morphon Studios and being published by Tencent. And whoever's handling their PR at Arena Breakout Infinite, I don't know fam, they seem very unprofessional and I'm like questioning everything, is this how marketing works these days? Hey, social media managers, you wanna explain this? Ah, if you want cloud with the young stance, you can't act so you have to be living grand free in their heads and do some busting on the socials and so they think you're the main character. Oh god, I'm old. But the game is free to play, and I managed to get a code for the closed beta. This game is made by a developer I never heard of. There's already a mobile version of this game and this is the attempt to port that game on PC. First time I saw the images of this game was randomly on Twitter and visually it looks pretty good. The first screenshots they showed were kind of mind-blowing to me. I thought this game is just another scam like the day before, but nope, it's real, it's actually pretty good. Like I said, I don't play extraction shooters, so I was going into this completely blind with some idea what should I should be expecting. But in reality, I had no idea, this is all new to me. First thing that got to me is the presentation. The presentation on how the game looks, the loading screens, the detail, how they show you the character and the menus, the controls, how movement or shooting feels. It's I'm actually impressed, it's actually really impressive how good this game feels. And this basically is a AAA studio quality work. I was not lost in the menus, I was not confused about the controls, and for a guy that never played extraction shows, you know, proper ones at least, I felt extremely comfortable about everything, and that's mostly because how the tutorial was set up. So whoever was designing the opening missions was just the first steps of launching the game for the first time, I will, it was easily explained to me what is going on, certain menu parts were locked because I did not need that part of the game at that moment, and it took me a couple of minutes to get the hang of everything. So props to the developers for actually caring about players like me, idiots like me, that want to get into this type of games. Regarding the gameplay itself, okay, that's a bit more complicated. Gameplay loop itself is fine, you spawn, you look around the map, you decide you wanna do, and you do it, loot everything you want or can, and go to your extraction point, get the rewards, upgrade your stuff, stop, you know, spawn back in, rinse and repeat. And no matter how well all the mechanics are designed in this game, which I really enjoy, I personally did not find it fun that I'm basically looting garbage. Actual, literal garbage. Now, when you play for a while and you start doing these missions and all that good stuff, you will realize soon that this garbage you extract does have some meaning. You can trade certain items you extracted for particular parts to upgrade your equipment or get some important valuables. But this is why extraction shoes never really interest me that much. 
I want to feel like I'm extracting important materials and equipment, and everything I extract can be used to improve my high tier gear that I'm bringing into the match. I don't think a bag of sponges or fucking shampoo gives me the confidence of me extracting something valuable unless the game is telling me that I stink like fucking sh Anyway, why do I need to do all of this if I can go hunting players instead? Because big chance they will have better gear than me anyway, and because of realistic shooting mechanics, they will die if I hit them to the head. Speaking of shooting, the gun customization they have in the game? Freaking beautiful, it's actually amazing, I love it. You can change pretty much everything about the gun, which makes the gun extremely unique to you. So when you actually make a gun that you like, it was expensive as hell, and you die in the game, oh man, tough shit, you'll be thinking about that gun for a while, because it was literally yours. This is definitely one of the best gun customization features I've seen in a video game, and things like that I would like to see in other games like Battlefield or Call of Duty. Regarding the maps, this is why I was really confused. Originally I was expecting to spawn on a big map that is like the size of a battle royale map and all that kind of stuff. You have like a good number of players spawning everywhere and it's basically a free fall. To my surprise, no, the maps are very linear and very basic. At first I thought the first map I was allowed to play on was basically a tutorial map. To help me understand the mechanics and the premise of the game, you go here, do missions, extract, blah blah blah. But as soon as I unlock the second map, it's not really any bigger. It is bigger, yes, but the layout is basically the same. Linear map design to force all players to meet in the middle as you know all teams spawn against their personal against their personal extraction points. So if I spawn on the left, they spawn on the right. If we need to go right, they need to go left. That was kinda of weird experience to be honest. But then I remember the game is called Arena Breakout, and if I look at this game objectively, yeah, it kinda makes sense. It's an arena type of extraction shooter, and in a sense, it does kinda of work. And for example, you can still have some amazing gameplay moments that are hard to replicate in other video games. We were chasing this guy on the server, and before that we were shot by another squad, and we survived. And I heard that player run away from us, and I was trying to shoot him, I did, but I had no idea if I killed him, so we had to go there, to that direction, and check if we can find his body, while keeping in mind that we were still being hunted by another squad in the same area, which was really, really cool experience. Here, to our right, run right, run to our right. Now I wonder how many players are on the server, and from what I gathered, the first map, the first tutorial map, minimum of 8 players of 2 squads and minimum 12 to 16 on the second bigger map, I don't know. I really don't know, that is just speculation on my end, but that's how the match is felt to me. Do, I, do we need more players? Uh, maybe actually, I don't know. But overall the game is very good. For a game that I never heard of just a couple of weeks ago, runs well on my PC, Unreal Engine 5, I think it's Unreal Engine 5, it's doing really amazing on this game, looks pretty good, gameplay loop is pretty okay, and because it's free to play, it's basically inviting all Escape from Tarkov players to try this game and have fun. But realistically, will I continue playing this game a couple months later, or when the game is finally fully released? Uh, yes and no, mostly because it's again, it's the idea that I'm literally looting trash from a dumpster, and I have to pretend that this trash I'm looting is somewhat valuable, because I need to complete the missions and get rewards for it. It's not the game's fault though, it, that's something that is specific to me, and I don't think any developer can fix that honestly. I don't think any developer can fix my broken ass, but that's a different story. We also don't know, maybe it was announced somewhere, are we gonna have wipes on this game? I know some people have strong opinions about wipes, but wipes are one of the main reasons why I never got interested in extraction shows to begin with, because I really don't want to start everything from scratch again, especially if I'm not playing that shooter, that extraction shooter, that often anyway. Again, not the game's fault, it's just the idea that everything I did before means jack shit and even, some, even if some people find that interesting and entertaining in some shape or form. And because it's a free to play extraction show, what's the monetization is gonna be like? Skins, expansions, items, in-game currency to buy, you know, get better gear? How much pay to win we're talking here? 
It's a difficult genre to monetize without being somewhat pay to win, and that's why I'm kinda worried regarding that. From what I've seen of their mobile version of the game, it's extremely pay to win. It's extremely grindy, not in a good way. But it's a mobile game, players over there are a completely different breed, and I don't think that kind of monetization tactics can work on a PC game like this, let alone console if they ever decide to do that. But long story short, I recommend to check this game out, see if it's something you fancy. This game was extremely inviting towards me, for a guy that doesn't play extraction shoes, for an idiot like me, this game was extremely inviting. Presentation is on point, music is fantastic, gameplay loop is interesting, it does feel like rewarding sometimes, even if it's, I'm extracting gar a pile of garbage, you know, even if it's a pile of garbage. It still felt somewhat rewarding. Gun customization is fantastic, it's very fun to build your own unique weapon, it does feel like the prices of certain items is a bit too much, but I understand why. You need to bring value to your weapons, you know, web all the weapon attachments, all that kind of stuff, so I get it. Some concerns about monetization, but I want to believe they won't go too overboard. And that's kinda it. My name is Tom, also known as the Lanky Soldier. I hope you enjoyed the video and my quick impressions of Arena Breakthrough Infinite. Hopefully it helps you a little bit, stay safe, don't be a douchebag, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash and Battlefield 1 Podcast and Lockdown Player on Spotify. Thank you guys for watching, stay safe.